Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> I'm Barbara Lockwood, the city librarian from Calabasas. And uh, uh, thank you for attending the fourth in our series of Spring Into Creativity. This, uh, the series of programs will continue until May and it's funded by a grant from the California State Library. And um, you know, you can sign up if you go to each month of our event calendar on our Calabasas Library website and click on the links and then it allows you to sign up. And then I'll send you the Zoom links for the other programs. So besides this uh, series of programs, you know, we have book clubs and film fanatics. We have, um, all sorts of story times online and all that also is on our website. So um, I would like to introduce Chef Steph. We've had her before. She's done a great program, lots of great programs for us live. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that now, but we look forward to hosting her again live at some point because we've had lots of great healthy food and chocolate programs for Valentine's Day and a lot of other things. So I'm looking forward to that when we can all get back together and taste some, some of uh, Steph's food. But for now, she's gonna teach you how to cook your food since you're home. So uh, Steph, take it away. Hi everybody. I'm so excited to have you here today. Um, so what we're gonna do just to give you a general overview, um, we're going to do um, cookie decorating. So we're gonna spend about 30 minutes um, learning how to actually, um, you know those cookies that you can buy from the store and they have that um, hardened icing on the top and they have a pretty design. That's what we're gonna do today with these cookies that I have pre-made. Um, the cookies that I did make are um, the sugar cookie recipe from The Joy of Cooking and that recipe is available to you. Uh, as well as the royal icing um, recipe, which is um, from Sally's Baking Addiction. Um, that's a website and she's a blogger and she's adorable. And she has some really cute stuff. Her specialty is baking. Um, so that is one thing that we'll, we will be covering as well as a few different salads um, and a couple of different dressings that you can utilize with those salads. You can mix and match. I'm all about using the ingredients that we have in the home already. Why go buy a million ingredients that you may never use again? So I really try to be a practical chef in that respect. Um, I did cook, um, I had my own catering company and private chef business for many years. Um, and I learned a lot of you know little tricks and things and that's why I teach now so that I can give everybody at home the things that I learned from culinary school and just from being in the field. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with our icing. Now, when you go to make an icing, you have to use obviously powdered sugar. Then you're also going to use uh, meringue powder. You guys all see this? Oops. Oops, that camera seems to be lagging a little bit. Okay, let's go like this. I wasn't patient enough, I'm sorry. Um, so this is meringue powder. You can get it by all kinds of different um, companies. This one happens to be by Wilton. You can usually get it at Michael's or um, cake stores. Um, they're not gonna be at the normal grocery stores. Um, but what this is, is it's basically um, egg white dried, dried out. Um, with a few different additives like cornstarch and some other things, which that this is the part, sorry, this is the ingredient that actually helps the icing to harden. So what we will do, let me get a little whisk here. And when I say little, I mean little. Look how little that one is. All right, so we're just gonna, add a little bit of water at a time. The recipe is, um, is a very large recipe. This is if you were doing a lot of cookies all at once. Um, the, it's four cups of sugar, three tablespoons of meringue powder, and then nine to 10 tablespoons of room temperature water. 
So did you see that? I didn't squirt, I did not squeeze very much of this water into this bowl and we already have a, a very, not super runny, it is thick, but the, uh, the icing has already started to thin out. So we wanna make sure that we get this nice and whisked up. You don't wanna have any little um, uh, balls of icing, the meringue powder. So you wanna make sure that this is nice and smooth. So you just give it a good little whisking. So once it gets pretty smooth, you can see all of the little, um, as I'm doing that, you see these little bubble marks that are popping. So that's telling me that all those little um, balls of uh, dried sugar and meringue powder are bursting. So that's good because now we wanna see it like this. It's a nice, but it's still thick. So it's not, it's not too thin. It, it doesn't, it, this is actually, if you look at that, this is the consistency you want for your flooding. You see how that'll drizzle and then it goes away. So there's two different parts when you're making these cookies. Um, you have an outlining icing. So you're gonna have one that you're gonna drop down around the perimeter. That's gonna be thicker. I'm gonna need to make another icing. I added too much water. This is the consistency of what we call flooding. So this is what we're gonna put into the, the center of the cookie. And then we're gonna allow it to go to the edges. Uh, but see how it falls away on itself? See how it kind of blends in? That's what you want for your flooding consistency, okay? All right, so I'm gonna get another bowl. It's easily remedied, it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna use the same amount that I had. I can eyeball it because I've done this so many times. I'm just gonna put the rest of my meringue powder in here. Whew. Don't don't breathe it in though. That's not good. All right, water. So this time I'm gonna add in just a little bit. See that? Let's just have that much. Oops, now I'm getting it everywhere because I didn't add very much. Now, the cool thing is with this, is this is where you can add a little bit of uh, flavor too. So if you decided that you wanted your uh, icing to taste like lemon, or if you wanted it to taste uh, like vanilla, um, you can add that in. Just know that if you add in vanilla, your flooding material is gonna take on the color of the vanilla. So it's gonna turn brown or brownish. It's gonna be more yellow. But you can always remedy that by using gel colors, which are my favorite to use. You know, there's different types of uh, food coloring. You have um, the ones where you drop it in and it's liquid, or you have, like I have, or I don't know if you can see inside that, um, it's gel. It's just a different way of doing it. It's actually less messy, believe it or not, but it still gets everywhere. Okay, so see how nice and thick this is? It's taking a little bit longer just because I don't want to go too far. Because if I get just too much moisture in there, it's not going to come together or it's gonna to be too liquidy, it's not gonna hold. Now, what if I actually added too much water and I was, you know, added ingredients? What can I do? 
can add more powdered sugar. Just add a little more powdered sugar, not too much. That's how we can uh, fix the situation. But we wanna make sure that this is nice and thick. Otherwise, it's not going to be a good outliner. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to make this color pink just for the purposes of putting a color in. And this is when you would put it in. So let, I'm gonna use just this much, not very much, not, not much at all. And it's gonna turn this a nice color. While you're doing that step, could I ask yeah. you a question? Oh, absolutely. I'm wondering about that white powder vanilla. Do you ever use that? Uh, is there a specific brand? Is it by Nielsen Macy? Uh, the one I have is uh, Castella. You know, I have never used it. So I, I, I venture to guess that it would be fine. Um, just make sure that you um, pay attention to how much liquid you're adding. Um, I don't know what it would do with, um, like in reaction to um, the meringue powder. Um, you, could, you could play with it. Um, it would give it a nice flavor, definitely. Um, and then if you find that your meringue powder just isn't um, hardening up, it could be that that would be your issue. So would you use the same amount as you do the liquid extract? Uh, I would have to honestly see the package because um, it could be that the ratios are very different. I'm not sure on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm actually going to get rid of this one. You know, you could probably do, now that I'm kind of analyzing it a little bit, you may be able to do a Google search for that um, brand or even go to their website. They may be able to tell you that. Because that would be something specific to their product, possibly. Uh, Steph, I have a question on chat. Um, oh. Someone's requesting that you turn your camera a little more toward your table so it lowers the view of your ceiling. Is it possible to turn a little lower or no? This? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, I think that works. All right, great. Thank you. I'm always happy to oblige. Here we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just placing this in one of my fancy schmancy little bottles here. I used to do this for, um, as a service to clients where I would actually, uh, I, I would do like little wedding dresses. They were really cute. All right, let's get this on here. Now, do you have to have these bottles to accomplish this? Absolutely not. You do not have to have these bottles. Um, I just have them, like I said, because I use them for business. I'm actually going to put a little bit more in here. You can easily use a Ziploc baggie and just cut the tip smaller. Um, like you would put it into, let's see. You could put it in the icing into a baggie 
and then trim just a teensy weensy bit on the, on the tip um, so that you can pipe it out. Or if you have um, like one of those Wilton cake sets where it's for um, decorating cakes, you can um, get the little, what is it called? It's a coupler. So there's a coupler that looks similar to this guy. And um, you attach it to either a Ziploc bag or to an actual pastry cloth bag. Either way, there's all kinds of ways to do it. All right, let's move this. I still might not have enough in here. It does not want to come out. All right, I'm so sorry. Da, da, da. This is why you end up paying $10 per cookie. I don't know if you've ever seen them in, in coffee shops. There we go. See, it's so thick that it just doesn't want to go in. There we go. Now you're cooperating. It's also a messy business here. Sorry, there's gonna be a little banging. All right, so here we are. So all I'm gonna do, actually pull this up closer for you. I may not be as steady as I would be if I was doing this straight onto the surface but you're going to carefully get as far to the corner as you can. can. But you don't wanna to go too far to the edge. Did I say corner with a circle? Well, that was ridiculous. But you wanna get as, as close to the edge as possible, um, but not go over so that it doesn't end up going over the side. But see how nice and thick this is? The flooding material is not gonna get through. There we go. There we have that, so see that? Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to get, <laughs> find where my camera is here. All right. So now I'm actually going to fill in this spot right here because I don't want to have spots where um, that flooding material would be able to get through. That would just not be good. As my Grammy would say, she used to say, well, that would be NG, meaning not good. She was doing text talk 10 years ago. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my other bottle and this one is gonna go really quick. See how this one is already, you can see it, it the top was starting to crust a little bit because it was hardening. That means that um, that meringue powder was doing its job. This one's gonna be much easier. Watch me get it all over the counter. I am going to have sugar all over my kitchen. I don't think the dogs would bother so much. Here we go. What I did was with these little plastic tips on some of them, I don't know if you can see this, you probably see it better right here. Uh, You can see this, this hole is a little bit larger than what it originally comes as. 
Um, that's because I want it to come out faster for the flooding. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put in a good amount. You don't want too much because this is going to spread spread out really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently take this to the edge. And I normally wouldn't have just this plain icing color. I just did this so that you could see the contrast. Usually what you would do is you would have the flooding color be the same color as the uh, edging color so that it looks like one almost piece of glass, if you will. So then you just carefully keep pulling it to the edge and you can see that it's starting to get a little thin in areas. So I'm gonna add in a little bit more. after I spread this piece out there. Okay. And then once I get this done, I'm gonna actually show you how to make like a little flower in the center and how to kind of drag a circle that I create in the center, how to, how to make it a flower. See, that's getting a little close to the edge. This one right here, that could easily turn into a going too far. Which if it ends up going too far, you can always fix it. There we go. And then what will happen is, if I've done this properly, What I'm doing is I'm kind of, um, there are little minute air bubbles. Ooh, that was almost disastrous. All right, and what you can do is you can come in and you can uh, pop those little air bubbles. I don't know if you can see that very well. Just so that you don't have, um, it's just so that it looks uniform. Now, if I was really, really taking my time, this would look even better than it does. Um, it would be all the same thickness. There are some areas where, you know, if I really wanted to spend an hour on a cookie, I could, uh, but we won't do that right now. All right, so I am going to now draw Come on. It all fell to the bottom. Do we have any questions while I'm waiting for uh, this thing to go to the bottom? If not, no big deal, because I'm here again. Actually, Steph, I want to, is this the icing used for black and white cookies? You know how those are? Yes, I would have to, I have not made those. Honestly and truly, I've never made them. I do need to do that. Um, I would have to look at the recipe and see if it is. So I can't say, uh, yes, it is or it isn't. I would assume that it's very similar. Um, I don't know if it uses meringue powder. I could, uh, at the end, if you guys have a moment, I don't mind trying to look that up. I always like to try to get the any questions that people may have answered. Oh, it looks like a donut. All right. So what you're gonna do is kind of let this kind of sink in a little bit. 
And we're gonna just kind of take a, a toothpick. We're just gonna drag that pink color out. It actually might work better with the frosting or the icing being a little bit thinner. Let me add a little bit of water to it. Hang on. That's the nice thing about have every, having everything laid out and having a little bottle of water just easily accessible. And then always kind of have a couple extra bowls around. Here we go. Whee! There it goes. All right. So we will outline again. You know, it may work better if I use this tip. Well, it could be, typically when you do this, you want it to be a little bit drier, not too dry, but it's, uh, is not wanting to cooperate. So what I can show you, I'll show you something different just real quick. I think I have like maybe a minute that I can play around with this. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is just real quick, I'm gonna add a little bit of this icing to here. This wouldn't obviously be the ideal way to accomplish this, but you'll get the general idea. It's actually very easy. And then I'm just gonna use black because it's the most that I have. All of the good colors, the kids always used up first or we used so much black that, uh... all right, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to create a circle. See how this one is a little more runny? That's what you're gonna wanna see. Then that way it's gonna spread easier. It's very, very hot right now underneath the lights. So everything, cause I have uh, a bunch of lights here. Um, I think that this is just super melty cause it's not hardening up the quick way. Um, usually if your kitchen is too hot, what you can do is, and you're gonna be layering colors You'll want to throw it into the uh, refrigerator for a few minutes in between colors so that it has time to harden. So, but does anybody have any questions about it? I know it does not look the prettiest, but you get the general idea of, you know, 
it's almost like when you do the spider webs also, when you do like a Halloween cookie and you pull it out this way. Does that make sense? So you do a, a similar stroke with the flower. So. That just looks like a big mess, doesn't it? <laughs> Steph, if Pardon? If you were gonna do the a spider web, would you start with the the black just in the center? Yes. Yes. So what you would do, I have this, so I might as well show you, right? Even though, you know, Halloween is, you know, kind of far away. But So with a, uh, with a spider web, you're going to want to do kind of a couple of different, so you may want to do like a, a dot and then a circle. Again, I'm trying to do this fast, so don't count me on a geometry and the uh, accuracy of my shapes. All right, so oops, from there, we would take this and we would give it, you just kind of keep kind of pulling through all of them. So if I created more circles, the spider web would be wider. See that? And then if you do it closer together, you get a more dramatic effect. There we go, see? Hooray. It's always just about being creative and, and playing with it. That's kind of, that's the fun thing about doing these types of cookies is you're playing with food. So if you have kids or grandkids, you know, you honestly, if, as long as you don't mind getting sugar and things all over your kitchen, you know, I find that when I, I actually teach homeschool kids cooking, so I teach kindergarten through um, 12th grade, they have the most fun with the cookie classes because they get to make a mess, they get to put sugar in their mouth, even though I tell them they're not really supposed to be, you know, putting things in their mouths when they're, you know, making food. Good luck on that one with a bunch of kindergartners. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just moving out my space here. Let me know if you have any questions because I can multitask. I can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time some days. I seem to be doing okay today. All right. Oh, goodness. Well, I have a fistful of sugar. All right. So we are gonna make a couple of salads now, which is always a nice thing. And we're kind of getting into the weather again, where the salad, like salads are going to be yummy again. I don't know if about you. I have a hard time eating salad during the winter when it's cold. I kind of like having a fresh, excuse me, I had a hiccup. Um, I, I like having a fresh salad that's kind of crunchy and cool during the summer, not during the winter. I do have though, I make a, um, a spinach salad that's a warm spinach salad and you actually heat up the olive oil and uh, kind of spread it on. And then you put like some goat cheese on it. It's good stuff. All right, so let's talk about the three salads or actually, I'm sorry. We have three salads with lettuce or lettuce type greenery. 
And then we also have a non-lettuce. So if you really don't like spinach, baby lettuce, or arugula, then you can always do this one. So what I'm gonna do today, instead of making a salad for 10 people with all of the ingredients, I'm gonna make little plates so you can get the idea, but then I'm not gonna waste food. Does that make sense? I bought all the ingredients, but then, you know, once you put a dressing on a whole salad, it, it can't come back from that. It gets soggy. So let's do, let's do my favorite one first. Check out these tomatoes. Is that not gorgeous? Oops. That's a beautiful heirloom tomato. I actually have, I have about 117 tomato plants in my garage right now that I grew from seed. I went a little nuts. My property is not big enough to put all of them in the ground. So I have to give them away. But I had fun growing them. All right, so I'm gonna take, I like the, the Trader Joe's lettuces. They're not super expensive. And again, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Um, but I seem to have good luck with it. But I'm just gonna take like a nice handful. And what the trick with salads is you wanna try to, you know, especially when you're doing an individually plated salad, you want to give it height. So, go like that. Then if you want to do, now, okay, so this, this particular recipe is the arugula, tomato, pomegranate, and goat cheese salad. Now, you can do, you can swap out pomegranate when they're in season, which is usually like in the fall. I can't remember if they're still around in the stores right now. I think it's just the fall and the winter. Um, but you can utilize persimmon as well. So you can either kind of have this be the showcase or we could cut it down a little bit. And I know this is gonna look ridiculous, but I use my shears for everything. So. I can make it and kind of adjust it. I know we lose a little bit of that, that pretty, but if we go like that, you can put one or two of the tomatoes on the plate. Like, I like that better, just tucking it in. And that can be a focal, a focal piece. Those are gonna be nice and sweet because I didn't wipe the counter off. <laughs> All right. And then something I like to do with um, salads, you can kind of make them be whatever you want. So you can have like certain vegetables. Um, I always like to try to throw in some kind of cheese, some kind of nut. So this is delicious with pistachio seeds. And if these weren't already uh, toasted, I would throw them into a pan and toast them. Um, but I cheated and they're already toasted. Now, I don't know if anyone else does this. I freeze my nuts. Um, anything that I have, um, unless it's something I'm gonna eat right away, like almonds or something like that. Um, I keep them in the freezer because my house gets hot. I don't run my air conditioner a lot. So it's gonna end up making some of my food go rancid. So keep it in the freezer. Uh, pinoles or pine nuts, I do the same thing. You can use these on salads, they're actually delicious. 
they're not just for pestos. But you know, have you ever, has everybody made a pesto before? Okay. You can make pesto with pistachio. I've done a pistachio mint pesto um, on little lamb chops or, um, or a rack of lamb pop. That's always yummy. All right. So something else that you can do. Here are some pomegranate seeds. I'm just gonna kinda doop a doop a doop. Just gonna give it a little push there. Then here is some goat cheese. Now, you have to use goat cheese. Some people don't like the taste of it. You could definitely use feta. That would not be a problem. So I'm just gonna put this goat cheese on here. Don't wanna do too much. This would actually, um, this salad would be really nice with um, one of the quiche. I don't know if you all got um, noticed that we have some videos um, of quiche and then we also have a, a tart with lemon curd. Uh, so those are two things to look forward to. So here's just, it's actually kind of um, fallen down a little bit. It needs to sit up again because it got weighed down with all the stuff. But I'm gonna move that over there. Then I'm gonna show you this really, really quick vinaigrette. Something that's always good to have on hand are different types of citrus. So I have some lime, whoops, I have a little lag again. Come over here. Oh, see, just the minute I move away, it comes back on. So I have lime, I have lemon, and then I also have Meyer lemon. I know it looks like a little orange, right? Meyer lemon, for people who don't know the difference, is a sweet lemon versus a very sour lemon. Um, it was just, it's a hybrid um, citrus. Um, if you're looking for something to be um, very acidic or sour, you'll wanna go with the regular lemon. This is great for lemon curd. That's what I used. Um, I like to sweeten up my, um, my dressings with a little bit of honey. So I don't need the added sweetness from the, uh, the lemon. It can actually counteract the taste that you're going for. All right, so what I'm gonna do I have all kinds of vinegars here, but we want the pomegranate one. So I'm gonna grab some pomegranate juice. And I'm just gonna do a splash of the juice. The recipe is on here, so you guys can make it exactly as it reads. I'm just gonna kind of throw it together a little bit because I'm doing different um, uh, measurements, that's the word. All right, so then I'm just gonna take a little bit of the honey, which that ended up being a lot, but we're just gonna go with it. All right, now I'm gonna get some, did I put lemon in this? Oh, there's that vinegar. Um, so with the pomegranate vinaigrette, you can use, um, this is kind of my, my go-to recipe, um, the orange musket vinegar, um, or muscat, if you say it correctly. Um, that one you can get at Trader Joe's. It's delicious. Um, I did, I'm actually gonna add a touch of lemon um, I have in the past used orange. 
I'm just feeling like a little bit of lemon today. So I'm gonna go this. I'm gonna see if I have that orange stuff in my refrigerator here. No, I don't. I didn't need it. All right, so what I would use instead, and this could be a class for another day, I made my own vinegar. So I actually made, um, I made this in November, so it's still good. This is a blueberry vinegar. So literally all I did was I took blueberries and put it in a container. I think that was all. And I just kind of stirred it every day because as the fruit ferments, this is gonna go all over the kitchen. Ooh, scary. I'm actually gonna use this blueberry and pomegranate go well together. So, but you wanna have some kind of a vinegar when you, obviously when you have a vinaigrette, because you wanna have a nice acid. It's gonna kind of make it stand out. Mm, it smells really good. It's almost like blueberry wine. If that's a thing, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna take a little touch of salt because we wanna always salt things as we go. And then you also wanna taste it. So that's not normally how I would taste something if I was cooking for other people. I'm just doing that because it's just me. It would actually need, needs a little more. There we go, over there. And then what you do is I just, oops, I just very, very vigorously, and you can see it emulsify right before your eyes. And if you're doing it right, it's gonna turn this beautiful kind of, um, it's gonna have like a cloudy look to it, but not cloudy in a gross way. So see how I could probably add a little bit more uh, oil to this. I don't know if you can tell with the, the coloring, it's not quite as um, opaque as I would like it. I actually made um, almost a full serving size for the whole salad right now. Sometimes it's hard for me to pare stuff down. So this is what you want to do with all your vinaigrettes. You want some citrus, some acid, and some olive oil or other oil that you like, okay? See how, can you see that nice color on it now? And then what you would do, take some kind of a spoon, just kind of drizzle it over. You don't want it to be swimming, but you wanna make sure that you get all that, ooh, you get all of that flavor. See that? And that's probably plenty. And then what I do is I just put the rest of it on the side in a nice like gravy boat or something. And then if people would like more, they can add more, but then, you know, it's, isn't that pretty? And then what I would do also is take a little bit of salt and salt those tomatoes. And salt the whole salad. Yeah, there we go. So that's one salad. We have 10 minutes left. Trying to stay within our time frame, but I don't mind staying a little bit longer if people have questions. So the same thing can be done for the lemon vinaigrette, which I think is with, oh, that's the green goddess. 
Okay, so the lemon vinaigrette, I'm just gonna show you the ingredients. Um, I actually had to buy another bottle of this. This, whoops, this is a citrus champagne vinegar. Um, lovely with salads. So you would use a little bit of this and um, maybe some fresh lemon, a little bit of honey for sweetness, because you have a lot of acid with the lemon fruit and in the vinegar. Um, and then, you know, whisk it together with that um, olive oil again. That works really, really well. You can also substitute apple cider vinegar. Really any flavored vinegar, um, you know, if you question whether or not do these flavors go together or not, um, there's a book called The Flavor Bible. I finally bought it. I had rented it from the library so many times. I, I was afraid that they were gonna tell me, you can't rent it anymore. You need to give other people a chance. <laughs> so um, not, not Calabasas. I live out in, um, near Thousand Oaks. Um, but uh, here, actually, I have the book here. Here, it's called The Flavor Bible. And it's really cool because you can come through and you can say, okay, say you wanted to pair something with cayenne pepper. It gives you every ingredient that you can use with cayenne pepper or with right next to cayenne pepper is caviar, if you were so inclined. So, all right, so this is this. Let me just get this out of the way. I'm actually going to break out the blender. I needed to show you just the plating. Not, like I said, I'm not gonna show you the exact vinaigrette because we just discussed the different ways that you can do it. But we can plate a nice spinach salad. Grab. All right, I disappeared into my refrigerator. So here's some cut strawberries. Some blueberries, some raspberries. Again, we want to try to keep it fluffed as much as possible. And then with this one, we actually did, we were using a, um, a feta. I love this feta. I get this from, um, Whole Foods. This is actually a true sheep's feta. Um, true feta comes from sheep. You get this stuff that's like um, the whoops the brand names. So they use the uh, the cow's milk because it's cheaper. That was a lot of feta, but that's okay. I like it. Um, so, but this one is true. Like I said, true sheep's feta. Um, if you have a dairy problem, like I have problems, um, I have several food allergies, dairy, cow's milk being one of them, I can eat this with no problem. It's just the, um, the protein in sheep, in sheep's milk is um, more mild, uh, even more mild than a goat cheese. Then, always want to put some sort of a nut on here. These just happen to be, I'm obsessed with these. These are candied pecans, you know, super healthy. No, they're not. Um, and I'm going to break this up here. Just enough. And then we would have, um, 
I really like the idea of the lemon, uh, citrus, vinaigrette to go with this because I have the sweetness in the candied pecan and the berries tend to be sweet as well. So that'll give it a full um, flavor palette. So if I had more strawberries cut up, I would place them up here. Maybe put a blueberry here, just so that it looks pretty. Ta-da! And then I would just put my vinaigrette down. I'm gonna have salad all over my kitchen in plates. Too bad the dogs don't eat salad. <laughs> all right, so the next one I'm gonna show you is a standard, a standard lettuce. So this is a, a, a baby romaine. Um, do I have many gardeners in the group? Anybody like to grow things? Lettuce is one of the easiest things to grow. And then, you know, especially in our climate, um, now when it gets to be the summer, it's a little hot for the poor lettuce. It will have issues. But if you try to put it somewhere that's in shade, it will do better. Um, but you could grow your own greens. That's what I'm trying to do. That's my goal. So that I don't have to purchase salad greens. Um, that's just me. All right. I mean, tomato. So just put my tomatoes here and there and everywhere. Put down some feta. I left my red onion that's chopped up in the fridge and I'm just gonna leave it there because I wanna make sure I get these two dressings done for you. Because I have two dressings that I wanna do for you in the Vitamix. All right. It makes me crazy when I have things all over the place, but it's inevitable when you do cooking classes, you can't have organized chaos, but it just makes me crazy. All right, here we are. So there is our regular lettuce. You could put walnuts on it. You could put the pignolis, um, you know, whatever you want. Let me get the green goddess dressing going. So now we do have, we have the recipe, which is um, by this woman. I think that she used to work for Martha Stewart back in the day. Uh, hold on one second. I lost my lights for a second. There we go. I had to plug in my Vitamix. I could make the, the noise of the Vitamix, but it's, uh, I need it to chop. Uh, so this woman named Lucinda, she used to work for Martha Stewart. She wrote a book called Mad Hungry, uh, Feeding Boys and Men, I think. I think she had a couple of young boys and it was just good good old food nothing fancy just for those of you who have boys or have grand boys you know how much they eat my son is is 14 and i don't know where he puts it all so i actually do a variation of the recipe so um, I don't use the anchovies. You don't have to use the anchovies. If you like them and you have them, by all means, go right ahead. I like to use scallions. And this is actually literally how I make this recipe at home. I take a handful of scallions, which I'm going off recipe, 
if you feel more comfortable doing the recipe that I gave you, by all means. Then I'm gonna do half of the cup. Well, that's interesting. My refrigerator in my uh, garage is very cold because my sour cream is frozen. All right. So it's about a half of a cup of sour cream. I will even add in, personally, a little bit of avocado mayo. Have you ever had that? It's, um, gosh, what is the company called? I have it right here. Ooh, it's Primal Kitchen. So um, this is a great, I love this product. I do, I do. So I'll actually just show you how I kind of do this when I make it. Okay, a little bit of avocado mayo, a couple tablespoons, just to give it a different creaminess. Uh, vinegar. I'm going to use a, it's the only vinegar I didn't pull. Literally, it's um, like a tablespoon, tablespoon of the white vinegar, a little bit of salt, and as you taste to see how it's flavored, you can always add a little more salt later. But remember, with a, a dressing like this one and the avocado one that I'm gonna make for you in just a second, um, once they go in the refrigerator and they chill, the, it's like guacamole. The flavors develop. So it's gonna be a lot stronger or it's gonna have a more defined flavor once it chills and all of those flavors marry. So don't put too much in there. So what I'm gonna do, I can't put this under here right now because uh, the machine is too big. All right, did I get everything? Look at hers and see if I missed anything. Oh, I missed the best thing, the garlic. Come on now. So what I do is um, when I, I buy a bunch of cloves of garlic all at once and I actually break it up so I can use it more quickly. I don't have to sit there and break open off of the, um, the bulb. So I have a little glass container that I keep them in. It still keeps them out of light and dark and dry. There's one, that's sufficient for now. If you like garlic, you could use a couple of cloves. So what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be loud. Um, I start on low, which I don't know if everybody is familiar with the Vitamix. There, um, there's variable and high. So I put it all the way down and then I turn my, my knob all the way down to zero. Okay, otherwise it's gonna go all over the place. And there we go. That's how easy it is to make that dressing. That's it. And again, I would put this into the refrigerator in some kind of a container and allow it to refrigerate for a while. I'm gonna rinse this out. All right, 
So now, sorry, I had to find my avocado. It was right here. It was hiding. All right, so come on. That's a very thick skin. Now I'm moving on to my next recipe here. I'm kind of all over the place. Try to respect your guys' time here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my avocado. You don't have to cut it up or anything, just, just like this, and then it goes. So the whole recipe, I believe is an entire avocado. Yes. Why not? Let's just do the whole thing. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? I know it's pretty straightforward. But you can ask me anything. Can I ask real quick about the green goddess dressing? Yes, when you absolutely. When you broke off the pieces of scallion, did you keep the white or did you just use the green in the scallion? I used the green. So you can see, that's a great question. I actually took it up to that point. And did you know oh, that you can it. actually- Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, did you know that you can actually stick these into the dirt and they'll grow back? I didn't, but I love that idea and I'm gonna try it. It's really cool. And you know, it's not like, um, if you try to do that with a head of lettuce, like if you take, um, if you cut off the bottom of a, a head of romaine um, and you try to regrow it, it loses something. It does not grow back. It is not a good cut and come again. That's the technical term they use for that. So you view green goddess over here. All right, so I have my avocados all the way at the bottom of that little thing there. All right, and I'm going to put in some garlic and I'm being very messy with this. I normally wouldn't just be throwing things all over the place. All right, so let's put that in there. Let's do another one. Now you can, um, say you don't have a really good blender. You can definitely mash up the avocado and try to do it all by hand and just mince up the garlic and that kind of thing or you can use a food processor, or if you have just a regular blender, that would work too. So there's always a bunch of different ways to try to uh, achieve the same thing. And I'm one of those people where I don't wanna be spending, I don't wanna buy one tool for one function. All right, oh, this one says lime juice. Getting crazy. I almost sent my blender flying. All right, so this calls for one to two tablespoons of lime. I probably need one or two limes to accomplish that. All right, so we have our lime. Um, for this one, we can either do cilantro, so we can get like a little handful of cilantro and throw it in there, or you can do scallions. So it's like the green goddess dressing a little bit. Um, let's do cilantro. But for those who don't like cilantro, some people do not like it. Um, I've heard, have you ever heard of people thinking that it tastes like soap for those people who don't care for it? I can kind of see that. It's just kind of one of those things. Oh, you know what else really grows well? 
in your backyard, parsley, black Italian parsley. You can make all kinds of fun stuff with that. I actually, I'm, um, I started this YouTube channel and uh, I, I just haven't been able to uh, get it off the ground completely. I haven't been able to dedicate all my time to it. Um, but I'm gonna make it partially gardening and cooking. So I think that the, um, in the videos, you, you see that it's my, uh, at the end of the video, you'll see my uh, handles for YouTube. All right, so that's probably sufficient. I'm done picking through the uh, cilantro. All right, um, oh, always need a little bit of salt, but remember after it's, it marinates a little bit in the refrigerator, we can always add more. Don't add too much to begin with. Now I'm gonna add in some sour cream. Now say you don't like sour cream or say you wanna to try to make it not as, uh, you know, there's a certain amount of fat that comes with sour cream. Uh, you can always use Greek yogurt and there's lots of different Greek yogurts that have, um, that are fat free. Probably have that, actually I take that back. There are fat free sour creams, I believe. I don't know how tasty it would be, but it could be an option. All right, so now I'm going to put it down on low again and then work its way up. Now, with this particular recipe, it's very thick because of that avocado. So we can do one, a couple of different things. Um, we can juice a little bit more lime into it. We can take um, a little bit of milk. If you just have some milk to water it down a little bit, or you can take water. If you do the water, excuse me, I keep wanting to hiccup. Um, if you do the water, you'll want to potentially add a little more salt later just because it is gonna like wash it out a little bit. So just something to think about. So I'm gonna turn the machine on and I'm gonna uh, spray just a little bit of the water in at a time. All right, see that didn't take much, but you can um, definitely see how that is thicker because you do have that whole creamy avocado. I feel like I work at Jamba Juice. Like it's still a little on the thicker side. Sorry, did you hear me as I was making a lot of noise? Sorry. Um, you can see that it's still very thick. So we could either add some more water um, or we could add more lime, whichever you would choose. So do you have any questions? Oh, I did have one other recipe. It's very simple. You all know how to do this. This is a uh, cut cucumber and it's actually been sitting out for a while and the poor cucumber is very dry. Um, so something, especially during the summer when cucumber and tomatoes are in season, I love to make a tomato cucumber salad with some red onion. That's one of the recipes that I have for you. Um, and then you can throw some feta in there or um, goat cheese, whichever one you want. Um, and then I would do a couple of spoonfuls of this particular dressing. 
the avocado dressing. Oh, actually, look, look how silky that is. Oh, that's nice. There we go. And then just kind of work it around. Again, a little bit goes a long way. And then you have, you know, this made for the week if you want to have some other salad. So there you go. There's just yet another salad that you can make. Mixing and matching the vegetables and uh, the different vinaigrettes or dressings. So I think that that is it. I think those are all the recipes that we covered today or that I wanted to cover. Sorry, I took you 